Hey, it's Blake. Happy March. Hope you have a good St. Patrick's Day. Whatever else happens in March. Uh, your plots to murder Caesar go well. Uh, we're going to talk about what I did last month. I made $17,000 in revenue on eBay, Amazon, YouTube, and Gumroad. Uh, how much profit did I make? That's none of your business. Um, I think saying I made that much revenue, that should qualify me as someone who can give you advice on this kind of stuff. Uh, because to make more than like $5,000 a month on eBay is not very easy. It broke down to $12,000 on eBay, $3,000 on Amazon, and then $1,000 on Gumroad and $1,000 on YouTube. My YouTube income is down significantly. And so as we're going to find out, my plans for March uh, include a lot of YouTube stuff. Let's go over the good stuff that happened in February, and then we'll go over to the bad stuff, um, because some bad things definitely did happen. Okay, as far as good things go, I broke the top 100 for used video games on eBay. So they rank you based on how many impressions and views and your click-through rate on your listings. It's not based on revenue. I wish they had some kind of revenue ranking. It's not. Uh, but in terms of like whose listings get the most traction, I was ranked 94th or 93rd, one of the two. I can't remember. I talked to somebody else who was one above or below me in books. So the numbers are kind of blurry in my head, but I broke top 100. That was awesome. I was at 145 uh, the first week of February and I checked on February 24th, I think, or 25th. And I was uh, ranked in the top 100. That's awesome. I'd love to keep growing. Um, by the end of the year, top 10, top 15, top 50, anywhere in there. It's, it's kind of difficult to know who the really big uh, sellers are beyond like Sosa Games, um, Declutter, uh, Lukey Games, and I think DK Oldies. Are they on eBay too? Those are all the big names. So if I could just be like in the top, top 25 uh, I think I'd be happy, and probably being in the top 25 would make me like probably $30,000, between thirty dollars and $50,000 revenue a month, um, which would definitely demand I bring on some other people or, or figure out better ways to list things. Because right now, with my current setup, I can ship out about 100 games. That's like the most I can do while still doing a lot of other aspects of my business, um, and I guess that could be thirty thousand dollars a month revenue, but it'd be it'd be really difficult to maintain that. So I'm looking forward to those challenges, but for the time being, I'm just trying to like get down my business down pat. Um, I found a really good way to FBA consoles. I have the right boxes for that. A lot of the, these processes that I'm trying to develop my business are going to revolve around getting the right tools. So, like for example, this machine right here. This is an ELM Eco Pro Two. That's an ELM Auto Smart. I think, yeah, uh, which is like the next step up. It's not the ELM Master, which uh, does 50 discs without you having to change them. But it is, uh, It's I wouldn't say it's automatic. It has auto in the name. I wouldn't say it's automatic in the sense that I'm still putting a disc in the caddy and starting it. Uh, but just from using it for, I've done like maybe 100 discs so far. Um, it really does make the process a lot easier because I don't have to think about, oh, is this disc done? I just press three or four if a disc is really scratched and it almost always comes out fine. Uh, and I'll make a video comparing a JFJ Easy Pro to an ELM Eco Pro 2 to uh, ELM Auto Smart because there is some pretty significant differences. So I'll just leave this that there. Uh, but just so you know, that is definitely improving my processes. I think I have a pretty good inventory system down for video games. I bought a lot of video games. I spent like between, I mean, we'll go over that in the bad. I spent a lot of money last month, um, both on things I planned on buying and things I didn't plan on buying. So that was bad, which is why I'm not going to go for profit because I don't think I made much money at all uh, because there were some really big, big investments. Uh, I developed affiliate relationships with supplyhut.com. So thank you, Charlie, on that end. Um, the code is WBK. It's 5% off. I will be buying their 6 by I think they call them 6 by 10 but the interior is 6 by 9 bubble mailers. I should get them for, I think, $11.50. I think that's what the price comes out to with my code and with tax and everything. So that's awesome. That's way cheaper than anywhere else I've seen them. Um, I have to change all my YouTube descriptions to include that. I also developed an affiliate relationship with AMZ Monitor. I'm making a video for them over the next few days. I'm using AMZ Monitor to dial down my Amazon FBA prices to figure out what gets FBA'd 
and what gets eBayed. It's advanced stuff. For most of you, it's not going to be that useful. But if you're trying to find a competitive edge to go above other sellers in your category, whether it's electronics or whether it's video games or books or, or music or whatever you sell, um, or if you're doing private label stuff, what it's really made for is for private label and wholesalers. I'm using a lot of the tracking uh abilities or features just to dial down prices um so it does have a lot of use cases but if you're like me probably only i don't know if 25 of you watching the video will actually find a use for it but those 25 are gonna be able to make a lot of money um can i i don't know how much I, that's another thing i can't say how much i made more but like for example games that i would sell for 15 dollars on ebay i'm now selling for like 35 or 40 on amazon and it's typically sales rank above 30,000. Uh, the sales rank below 30,000 are pretty easy to know what you, you do on both. But like, um, for example, Tiger Woods 10, uh, I can sell for $7 on eBay or 29 on Amazon. And just one of those things that I found through tracking other sellers, seeing what they sold, and then applying these to my uh, inventory. Um, I would love to have my own app built where I can scan the barcode and it tells me where to go. But for the time being, I'm just using my brain to figure out what goes where. Uh, the investments in my business. So I spent a lot of money on games last month. I spent about, I think, $5,000 on games last month, um, which I planned on doing that. I planned on spending on about 4000 but some good deals came up. So I spent about $5,000 on games. Uh, but then in the middle of February, the power went out. And so in order to, to make sure that I hit all my orders and didn't lose my account and yada, yada, yada. And I know you're saying, oh, well, they give you protections, but I still don't want to, I don't want to be in a position where I have to ask for forgiveness from eBay. I just want to be doing things the right way. So I had to buy a generator, I had to buy gas, I had to buy all these cords so I could use my internet on my phone to print off labels to then come in here uh, and, and do all that work. So that was an unintended expense. Um, I had to put some money into my car. You know, that's kind of a work expense. I use my car almost exclusively for work, but it's a personal vehicle as well. Uh, so just things like that. And then this right here, this machine was, for me, very expensive. Um, I'm doing a deal with them where I'm going to make a video on it. I'm going to get a little bit off, not a huge discount, but a pretty minor discount. Uh, and, you know... It's, it is what it is. It's expensive. It's going to help me make more money. But essentially, between the generator um, and between buying that and between just like my car stuff, I'm making a very small amount of money this month. Now, next month, March should be way better because I've got all the inventory. I've got no, I'm, I'm planning on not buying anything unless some amazing deals pop up in March. So that should just be able to hopefully make up for the investments I made last month. Um, but you know, that's business, right? You, you have to toe the line between reinvesting in your business and paying yourself. And I still am paying myself. Like I'm not going to, you know, be broke or anything, but it is just like, <laughs> you know, lean, lean times this time of year. And then hopefully, hopefully it all pays off. And the amazing Q4 we had last year is three or four times that. And I'm not going to have to worry about any of this stuff next February because I'll have this machine. I'll have hopefully better processes. In February, I also tried to mentor three businesses on eBay, uh, just using the skills and systems I've developed to help me go from making no money on eBay. I was almost entirely an Amazon seller in 2020 to being almost all eBay. You know, I told you what it was $12,000 revenue against $3,000 revenue on Amazon. So for the most part, my business is, what is that? Four fifths eBay. Um, pretty pretty significant uh, difference. And out of those three, only one person made it to the end. So by talking to him and learning about this, I think I understand better how to develop a mentorship program. I'm still debating if it's going to be um, small class sizes, if we're going to do just a straight up course. I learned that uh, doing one-on-one -on -one stuff, I, I do not charge enough for that. I probably spend about 20 hours per one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And in order to charge a price that I feel comfortable with, I don't think it would make sense. So I'm trying to figure out a way to do some kind of like monthly or, or quarterly classes with like 10 people. And we meet once a, once every two weeks for like an hour and a half or two hours. And everyone talks about what they're doing. Um, and we go off of a template I have 
And hopefully that turns into this kind of thing where, okay, you pass through the course and you pay 20 bucks a month and you're part of the Discord and it creates a growing community of people who all are on the same page. Because really, um, the one guy who made it all the way through, he told me that the reason that he succeeded in his mind was because he came into it with an, with an open mind. The other two people, they had their ideas about how things work and they were totally opposed to my strategies. Uh, and that just didn't work. And so I have to find out people, I have to find people who are willing to do what I have to say, uh, because it is kind of a little bit different. I'm heavy on promoting items and increasing sales velocity and building your business that way, as opposed to trying to squeeze out every last penny from every last item. I've also been experimenting with raising prices. Uh, what I've been doing is on my quantity listings, the things that sell multiple a week, um, I've been raising it by a quarter every time an item sells, and that seems pretty minuscule, right? But if I raise it by a buck fifty and I sell ten thousand items a year, that's a pretty significant increase in revenue. And so, just thinking of things like that, tweaking processes, that's where I'm at now with the business. Um, I feel good about it. I, I hope, hopefully, the summer is going to be just continuing to grow, uh, and we can find a sweet spot for any given. Uh, video game title. That's what I'm mostly doing is video game title. On the YouTube side of things, I did the Trash to Cash podcast a few days ago. Love doing that. This channel, I think I'm just going to create it to be like this or change it to be like this, where it's just about my business. It's about news on eBay, news for self-employed people, news on Amazon, stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm going to develop um, cards to cash for specifically uh, trading cards or sports card stuff. Uh, and then I have a new channel called What Sold on eBay, where every day, except for Sunday, uh, you're going to have a new video where I go over what sold the previous day, or in the case of Monday, on the previous weekend. And my hope is that can develop another small community, uh, give me some ad revenue, and allow for more opportunities for sponsorships with just like more hard e-commerce products. The kind of things that like um, Vendu, for example, I'm working with them what they want to do is target eBay sellers. And so I want to nail down the audience in that way to hopefully further monetize it to a greater scale. Uh, the people who watch my content, uh, hopefully I can do some more podcast stuff. I've been talking to Carrie who's American arbitrage about a sports card podcast. I'd like to do a video game podcast and I'd like to do like a self-employed podcast. Um, is that all feasible? I don't know. But through like kind of rigorous scheduling and, and saying, okay, we're only going to do an hour of filming um, and then just posting that, you know, because you have planned out segments and because you have good chemistry with your co-host, I do think it is possible. I have my setup now where I can just talk into the camera, it goes to my computer, and then through very minor editing, I can just post it that way. Uh, I think I have to do that until I can make, you know, $10,000 a month on YouTube, which... That was my best, best, best month back in like 2019 or 2018. I forget now. It was so long ago. And if I can get back to doing that every month, then I could definitely pay to have an editor and a manager and a producer and all that kind of stuff. But that's all, again, you know, down the line. Because if you're self-employed, you have to have several different revenue streams. Because even, you know, making $15,000 a month on eBay, you're probably only netting like seven or $8,000, which is uh, not bad. But um, if you're self-employed, you should probably be aiming to make more than that. At least that's my opinion right now. So that's February's update. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're new, which I don't know why a new person would watch this, please subscribe. If you're not new, comment below with how your February was, with what your plans for March are. And everyone watching, everyone give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys soon.